Hi everybody and welcome again to Adventures in Parenting, 30 Days to Becoming a Better Parent. My name is Julie Flaherty. For all of, the, all of you following, easy for me to say, for all of you following, we are in day 15, halfway point, yay! Thanks everybody for joining us and um, joining us for 15 days. It's a long commitment, I know, we got 15 more to go. So today, we're going to review. I know, everybody needs a review. It could be a quiz, you be the judge, right? Um, so while I was preparing this, I kept thinking about the uh, television show Phineas and Ferb, right? For those of you who are fans, I think I know what we're going to do today, right? So I wore Perry today just for that, right? Only I'm not going to sneak off and I'm not a double agent to your knowledge. So we'll see how this goes, okay? So I've got a lot to show you, so pardon me while I move around, but I'm going to tear this off and we're going to start and see if we can review what we've learned so far. Are we ready? I know it's magic, right? So we'll see. We've got day one. Day one was our review, um, what we were gonna do, right? Well, I know what we're gonna do today. Well, I know what we're gonna do this month. So we're gonna talk about parenting and I talked a little bit about that and I talked about um, my history and why I do what I do and I keep bringing that up. I've got five kids and they all have issues just like we all do and they've got some baggage and we've had to deal with that. Um, day two, we talked about a rule book, and don't you wish all kids came with a rule book? I know I do. If you find one, let me know. Oh, that's my job. So we're going to work on that rule book together, right? That's what we decided. We talked about memory, long-term and short-term. If you remember, long-term memory is five to seven minutes or longer, and short-term memory is three to five seconds. Everybody got that? You remember? Right. And I gave you some examples. We also talked about comprehension, and comprehension is more than just reading and regurgitating, right? It's, it's taking it in, it's becoming part of the story, it's being able to paraphrase it so I can explain it to you, kind of what I'm doing right now with what we've done so far. Then we've got visualization. Visualization came in several points, and today I have a cameraman, so he's going to pan down a little bit so we can talk about what we did today, what we did today, what we did this month on visualization. We talked about processing discrimination and manipulation of visualization. And those are all fancy terms for how do we see the picture on our head, how do we manipulate the story in our head and see it in our head, and how do we give it back or sort it out for other people. Really? That's all we talked about. So we're going to pan back up and we are going to move on. All right, day three. Day three was uh, all about logic and reasoning and problem solving, kind of like what we're doing right now. We've got a lot to do and a lot to talk about and a ton to review, and I'm giving it to you as fast as I can. So I've got 15 minutes to tell you everything I need to know. Whew. It's a lot to do in a short amount of time. We had day four, we talked about attention, which we've all figured out at this point that my ADD kicks in sometimes and uh, shiny things distract me and things go on all the time, which is what kids have to deal with as well in the classroom. We talked about sustained attention, we talked about divided attention and selected attention and what those three look like. And sustained attention is doing what I'm doing right now. I'm going to give you information, I'm going to pinpoint my focus and I'm going to finish it to the end, right? Divided attention is doing more than one thing at one time, but doing them both really well all the way to the end, right? And selected attention means I've got stuff going on in the background, like right now that dumb dog that keeps barking in our house is still barking. I've got kids going on and swirling around me, and I've got my lovely cameraman today who's helping me out. So I've got to make sure that I'm giving direction to what I need to do and I'm getting the job done, right? Kids have to deal with this every day in school, so we talked about that. We're going to move on to distractions. Distractions are all those things that can take my attention away. Remember, shiny things, woo, squirrel. Okay, so that happens all the time in the classroom as well. We've got kids talking behind us, we've got clocks ticking, we've got kids tapping, we've got all sorts of things going on, noises and shiny things. Shiny, right? So we've got to be able to get past those and we move on. Maybe it's fighting back now. Oh my gosh. Okay, we've got day five. It's not pretty, but it's there. I'm in a hurry. Okay, come on. Day five, we talked about processing speed and how that's not just taking information in, but it's also giving it out quickly, efficiently, and effectively. So those are three things we need to be able to do with everything we do quickly, efficiently, and effectively. Yep, my little tomato fingers come up again. So we talked about the different kinds of processing speeds. 
We've got simultaneous processing, which is taking huge chunks of information all at the same time from all over the place. We talked about sequential processing, which is taking things in an orderly fashion, such as dates and timelines and things like that. Spelling words was, I believe, the sample I gave you. So we're going to take chunks of information, but we're going to take it in an orderly way. We're going to take it in, retain it, and give it back when somebody asks us. We've got also, whoops, I'm sorry, yes, sustained. We've got sustained processing, shiny. Um, we've got sustained processing, which is taking not just chunks and not just se sequential, easy for me to say, but we've got a whole lot of information that we've got to take in from either a lecture or reading material or reading and taking notes at the same time. So we've got to do a lot of stuff at once with that. Day six was change is good. And it's not always um, welcomed, but it is a good thing. Change can be a wonderful, wonderful thing as long as we embrace it. Okay, remember what I said, the definition of crazy, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. We need to learn to expect a different result or do things a different way. Otherwise, we're not going to get any good information in. And I gave you a new vocab word, neuroplasticity. It's one of my favorite words ever. And that just means the brain can change what we used to know as brain science is no longer that way. It's just a big a uh, cycle of change and new growth with those neuro uh, fibers in our brain. So we're going to talk more about that later on with the games, but I wanted to get that word out to you. Um, we've got three reasons why the brain changes. I'm going to have the cameraman pan back up. We have three reasons why the brain changes, and I'm hoping you guys all remember those three reasons. Fear, anger, frustration. That's the only reason the brain changes. Remember I told you my grandma says if we stay fat and sassy, then uh, we're comfortable and there's no reason to change. I used myself as an example. If I have to buy new pants because my rear end gets a little bigger, I'm going to do it for certain reasons. Or I'm going to lose weight. I'm either going to be fearful for my health, I'm going to be mad at myself because I have to buy bigger pants, right? Or I'm going to be frustrated I have to lay on my bed to zip up my britches. I mean, really, come on. Otherwise, who cares? I'll just go buy bigger pants. All right, we're moving on. We're moving on. Possibly, if I can get a grip, we're going to move on. All right, day seven. Day seven was a great day for me because I let you know just how passionate I am about what I do and how we all needed to change our perspective on things, especially when it comes to kids. One of the worst things I ever hear is lazy kids. I've never met a lazy kid, ever. I've met kids who don't know how to get the smart out, who aren't sure what to do, who are um, unmotivated because they have nothing to motivate them or they were trained incorrectly. And that sounds really Pavlovian, but some kids just have a history where they're not sure how to perform the way you want them to. So we have to show them how to do that. And the best way is through how we perform personally. We got to lead by example, right? And that's hard to do all the time. Um, day eight was about visual span and saccadic fixation. What did that mean? That was how we read. So do we read in a snapshot? Do we just take a big glance and take in as much as possible? Or do our eyes bounce around the page, right? Saccadic fixation is bouncing or smooth and visual span is how much can I take in at one time. Day nine was about gifted students. It's a huge passion of mine. All five of my children are gifted. And I do this because I'm passionate about my children, and I was kind of forced into it. But after 20 plus years, there is an absolute reason I still do this. Passionate about it, I have the right perspective. I know a lot about gifted kids, right? Gifted kids are notorious for underachieving, which is down here. I'm going to have cameraman pa pan down for me. Underachieving giftedness was the, ne was the next day. That was day 10. And underachieving giftedness is an amazing, an amazing, an amazing thing that happens. That's where people like me, you can pan back up if you like, people like me who are gifted, find those loopholes, remember? We are master manipulators. There's a whole list of stuff that I gave you for giftedness and a whole list of stuff that we talked about for underachieving giftedness. Yeah, hi, poster child. Mm, okay? All right, we're going to move on. We are almost there. Day 11. Day 11, we talked about reading um, games. We need to pan up just a little bit if we can. 
Um, we talked about blending, segmenting, and decoding. And those are huge with reading skills. So that was the Seussian stuff that I talked about. It's being able to, to take sounds and break them down. It's taking sounds and putting them together. So blending is putting together, segmenting is taking apart, right? Decoding is being able to take those sounds and decide what sounds they make, right? Is, in, is, is this letter that we call an A, is that making an A sound, an A sound, or an A sound? So we've got to decide what we're doing, okay? Does everybody remember this? I hope so, I hope so. We're gonna move on. Day 12 was one of my favorites. I had my first guest. I had Marty Flaherty, who happened to be my husband, and we talked about parenting kids with disabilities. And that was a fun interview to do, and I was really blessed to have him that day. Um, once again, we're not gonna ever tell him that the camera stole the soul, so shh. And if you haven't seen that segment, go check it out. He's kind of a funny guy. And it was a really cool interview, and I probably will only get him one more time if I beg a lot. So if you want to see Marty more, you got to let me know. Remember, comment box, ha ha ha, got it in. Okay, so day 13 was um, working with students with disabilities or working with people with disabilities. And I had another guest, and I'm going to see if you can see that. Janice Martin, sorry. Um, so Janice, I was thrilled to have. We're going to pan up just a little bit. Janice, I was also thrilled to have because she's an expert with working with special um, disability people. She spent probably three years um, working with them in school. She works with them professionally with what she does, and she lives with them. So that was really neat, and full disclosure, she's also my daughter. Um, but it was really neat to interview her, and I think she had more fun than she wanted to admit. You never know. But if you want to see more of her, once again, comment box, and I'm sure she'd be glad to find time in her schedule, and if not, I'll try and twist her arm or something. I don't know. She lives here. I can figure out something. Um, we have other special guests coming. We're going to have to um, figure out how we can get them all in. So we've got day 14, which was yesterday, and that was all about frustration. Is it good or bad? And I've gotten some comments that some of you f agree with me that it can be good, and some of you agree with me that it can be bad. But let's not forget you can't be stuck in it. You've got to learn something from it, and you've got to move on from it. So there are tricks in, uh, that we're going to get to when we get to games. And day 15 is today. Whew. I can't breathe too much because we've got to get to other things. And what's coming up for everyone? Games, 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 games. And if you can't read that, it says games. So I know I keep teasing you with the games, but we're going to take what we've learned so far, and we are going to play some games. They're going to be fun games. They're going to start easy, and they're going to get more difficult and complex. So once again, thanks everybody for coming. Comment box, comment box, comment box. If you need to email me, you know the song, julie.flaherty at gmail.com. I'm so glad to see everybody. Thanks for coming by today, and I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow, day 16. Can't wait to show you my first game. Bye, everybody.